there's a there is a shot in the movie that's amazing to me. I cannot believe he did it where they're walking down a hallway, him and the girl are walking down the hallway and they're having this like kind of conversation about their relationship and then they turn and they leave and he pans over to a reflection in a door. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm a director living in Taiwan. Hi everybody, I'm Luke. I'm a cinematographer living in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, so today we are talking about a film that we got requested called A Brighter Summer Day and it's uh, directed by our favorite director, Edward Yang. Uh, so this movie is about uh, young people living in Taipei in the 60s and they are they are mostly uh, like ethnically Chinese families that came over with the Guomindang to escape the communists. And a lot of these kids, it's a little bit about their life uh, growing up in Taiwan as high school kids and how they joined gangs to kind of try and uh, protect themselves and kind of also the, the kind of like hopeless life that they led at the time. Uh, these kind of poorer Chinese immigrants. Uh, and it's a really interesting kind of point historical point of the movie you can correct me on this Luke if I'm wrong but uh, at the time the Chinese were uh, the they they were controlling the government right because they yeah. came over and kind of took over so the local Taiwanese that lived here already kind of hated them right Is yeah right see, there's a lot of conflict between each other so in the yeah. in a particular era there's a, a lot of interesting story in uh, particularly this one is really reflect those kind of situation even in school so very interesting yeah and so like because the the government was controlled by these chinese uh you know these people that were considered to be like foreign the taiwanese kind of really had a lot of conflict with them but then the normal people that had come over that weren't part of the government they were just like regular poor low-class people but they were also discriminated against and so they formed these gangs to try to protect themselves yeah absolutely right yeah, and, and I think that's the really interesting dynamic of the movie is like the idea of these people that are just like normal working class people and then they have to form these gangs just to kind of get through their life. And, when the government right. take over, they definitely take over some resource of the society. Oh, okay. It lands the resource, the, uh, it, I, mean, I don't know, financially stuff. So. so that's why people kind of were angry with them. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. Well, in the movie, though, the movie centers around kids, which is interesting. And I think that's a really interesting way to look at it is like, look at the life of these immigrant kids that come over and kind of the experience that they have going to the night school where like all the bad kids go and all the trouble that they get into and kind of like these like, uh, you know, the, the kind of funny things that they do where they like have these parties and and they sneak into the movie studio and watch the women changing yeah and yeah, like yeah. get into trouble with uh with the security guard and kind of do all these kind of things typical things that the teenagers would do but then as the movie goes on it gets like worse and worse and actually you know they they get into like gang wars and like fight each other and kill each other and it's it's pretty it's a pretty like interesting way to look at like how this kind of violence starts right so it starts as just like this way that kids will like try to protect each other but then it kind of turns into something where they can't get out of it they get stuck in it and their whole brain kind of gets stuck in this violence because like the people that they look up to are gangsters <laughs> you know well yeah in some way they just it's a metaphor for the society right i mean oh, okay the director Edward Wong, Edward wanted to use this kind of story to really tell in, well, in our society, there's an even bigger conflict. You, if you can see in school, in a teenager, they can produce this kind of, I mean, like this kind of gangsters against each other, then you can imagine yeah. how, I mean, how, how powerful, how worse the adult society would be would be even worse right so the 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 end of the film which is it's a spoiler but it's not really a spoiler because if you know the chinese name the chinese name 
is if you translate it directly, it's like the murders on uh, Guling Street by teenagers. So you know, if you know what the meaning of the Chinese name is, that somebody's gonna die, right? <laughs> so uh, in the film, uh, the the kid, the this the boy, he kills his girlfriend, and now it's the story that this is based on, where he had heard that this is a very famous, I guess, news story at the time in the '60s, was this guy had killed his girlfriend, and kind of the reason why he did it. And so Edward Young was fascinated by this, and he wanted to make a movie about this whole issue, and. He does it in the way that only he can, where he really talks about, it's about this uh, personal story of this kid and he falls in love with this girl and you know, he, he feels like, um, like she disrespects him. But then it's also about how the whole society contributed to this murder, you know? Like, like you were saying, it's a society thing. Like the gangs and then the way that his father's treated and then the way that the you know the Chinese minority is treated or I guess they're not a minority they're a majority but the the separate ethnic groups are treated and it all contributes to this violence and I think like we had talked about before I think Edward Young is just really um, he has a very pessimistic worldview <laughs> he just thinks like <laughs> the world is a really bad place and like the outcome and you can see, like, his movies always end really badly. <laughs> yeah, someone needed to be dead. And it's like, I think his, his way of looking at the world is like, the outcome is going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, always, always. But I don't think he's, he's, he's anti-social society. No, that, that's true. You're right. I think one of the things that he does that's, like, really brilliant is that at the beginning of the film, you know, there's all these different characters. And when you watch it, a lot of his movies, I always kind of wonder who's important and what is important because some things don't seem like they're important but at the end of the film everything always kind of comes together and this movie is really long it's like it's four three, hours I three think. to four hours and it's yeah it's almost four hours long and everything like all these different little things that you don't think maybe mean anything always end up kind of tying together and all the characters who you're like wait who's that guy in the beginning you're like who's this person and who's that and why why is this person and like all but at the end of the movie you know who everybody is you understand how they fit into the story yeah and why they're important and how, what they you know how they affect they, everybody ends up affecting the plot in some kind of way like there's this uh, and all the little things too like there's this uh thing with the watch uh where at the beginning of the film, the oh. older brother yeah, yeah. steals a watch. To pawn for money. He, yeah, he pawns it for money to go gamble, right? And then his, his family gets all upset at him, and like they make him go get it back. And then in the end of the movie, the watch gets, uh, is gone again, and they blame the older brother because he had done that before. Yes. Right? But it's really the younger brother that had stole the watch, and it ends up being like this important part, this important part that leads to the ending of the movie, and you're and you're like, oh wow! So that whole thing with the watch ended up kind of coming back and having a little bit more meaning. But in the beginning, you think like, what is this weird story? Like he steals a watch, then he gets it back, and okay, the end, right? Like, who cares? But it ends up having a lot of meaning, and I think when you watch an Edward Young movie, you have to really just like open your mind up to that and like be like, okay. I know a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense like right now, but it's gonna it's gonna come together and have meaning. Um, what did you think about like I know that uh, the the style of shooting that he has is obviously very unique. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts about that? The way he used the camera is very subtle. I mean, not fancy camera movement, not steady can just you can see always on the tripod. Sometimes pan a little bit, but not really the, in. In this movie, there's a few like dolly shots. Like, there's a lot of shots he does where people are walking down the street and he'll dolly with them. Oh, right. The, the father and the son talking on the yeah. street with a like, uh, bicycle with, with them. Yeah. Which is brilliant shot. I like it because they just normal daily. Uh, like you see, it, it just. There's, there's two sections. Like, the first section would be the father very pissed off the, the teachers. And the second session, mm -hmm. when his father go into the, I mean, the, you know, this political issue with her, his, his father, right? After yeah. that, his father totally changed. So you can see even the same situation, the same shot, but within different situation, you can tell, well, this well done made Dolly talking. Oh, sessions. yeah. So in comparison, you can immediately showing, oh, so, so, 
I don't know. I just feel the same. Sometimes the same camera angle, the same movement can create even bigger power than different different. That's really interesting, view, right? So, so he uses the, the he has, he uses the same shot, same location, same angle, tracking the kid and him walking with the bicycle. And the first time it's happy, and the way they're talking is like a nice kind of conversation. And then the second time, after the father has been basically like tortured by the government, it it tracks again, and it's everything's the same with the camera, but the emotion is different. So the scene is totally different. So this is that's even, really cool. This is this kind of technique even put out the differ the contrast between. Different yeah. time, different sections. So sometimes yeah, we that's really, totally true. really f remind me think about okay. Sometimes we need to design some movement which is might be seems to be boring, but actually serve the story, right? So yeah. we, we design, yeah. design, design the movement, design the camera angle. Sometimes it's not just looking good. It's sometimes really need to think about okay what serve the, per the story the most he doesn't make his camera tell you what to feel right like he will have the whole scene and the whole situation and the way the actors are and like all of it together tell you what to feel but he won't cheat right like he's not doing like a like oh this this guy is sad now so i'm gonna cut in real close on them or something like that he doesn't do that he'll just like he'll be like okay these are the two shots they're exactly the same and he trusts, I think he has a lot of trust in the audience to be able to like know what they're supposed, like what is supposed to happen. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Well, there's a good sentence saying you cannot act better than the audience in, in, in the audience's mind, right? You, I mean, you cannot, you, you have to leave some imagination for the audience so they can yeah. put out even better images than you shoot. Sometimes you really and he does that. leave some space. He does that a lot. Like there's a there is a shot in the movie that's amazing to me. I cannot believe he did it. Where they're walking down a hallway, him and the girl are walking down the hallway, and they're having this like kind of conversation about their relationship. And then they turn and they leave, and he pans over to a reflection in a door. Like it's not even a you can't even see them. It's just like their shape, you know. Like you can, it's like a, it's like a wooden door that's like really shiny and you can see like the outline of people sort of, and he holds on it for like three seconds while they talk or however long, five seconds while they talk and, and you watch the movie and it's not, you're not like, this is weird. You're just like, you're like totally enthralled in this, in this thing. And you're literally just looking at a door and shadows. It's like, I mean, it's amazing. You, I was, when I was watching it, I'm like, how he has so much guts to be able to like i'm gonna film a door <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be it's, and it's gonna be genius this is really amazing well he certainly yeah. have and then like there's confidence. another scene where like they're they they're having a conversation and like everybody just w leaves the frame they just walk out and he oh, holds and, he, and you can hear he the conversation used, still but he, he just holds on the location and they're talking and there's nothing well so you can see when you watch his movie, you so, sort of you are reading a novel, right? You are not yeah. really watching people perform. You are reading sentences. You are reading words. Is there anything that you didn't like about this movie? Well, I watched this movie several times. For the first time, I don't know what. I mean, it's a little bit too complicated for me when I was young, right? Uh, yeah, so it's confusing. You, you, you need to really have some experience or you really need to get a little bit older to really understand the story. So for me, mm. uh, well, it's not necessarily bad, but it's just a little complicated for me when, when people don't yeah. really pay attention to it. So if I will make it, I maybe cut off some sort of things, make it easier to yeah. read. But but it's not really a, no, not really a downside for this movie, so. There's one thing that I think uh, could be fixed is that the whole kind of ending of the movie, the reason the kid gets mad at the girl and kills her, all kind of centers around this one idea of like, at the very beginning of the movie, before he even knows her, he's hanging out with his friends and they go into, they go into a room and they see somebody kissing somebody, right? And like, he always thinks that that's a different girl. 
And so because he thinks that it's this other girl, he considers her like, oh, she's kind of just like a bad girl or whatever. Like she just wants to play around, mess around. And this other girl, she's perfect, right? And then in the end, he realizes that the girl that was kissing was the girl that he likes, like the main girl, his girlfriend, who becomes his girlfriend. And so he considers her to like, oh, you just want to play with guys. And he considers it like, a, it's like a weird thing about his masculinity, right? So it's a really important thing. But that scene where he sees the person kissing is really, really, really fast. Too fast. Too like if you blink, yeah, if you blink, you miss that scene. Like you don't even know that what is going on at the beginning of that mo- of the movie. You're like, you're like, what happened? Like it's really quick. You don't tell. But it's who's such who. an important part of the whole movie that like it's kind of a shame like i wish he like i understand he doesn't want to show who the girl is right because that's a part important that he doesn't want the audience to know that the girl that was kissing the guy is the girl he likes but also you need to know that he saw this person kissing you know what i mean yes so it's a kind of a problem with the film i think like the the, one of the most important things to understand the movie is really quick and hard to catch Right. This is a little f- f- detail we can fix, like using well, yeah. the, just just choice. You can longer yeah. the the section, or you can put the camera closer, or something. You can definitely yeah. totally change these these kind of details. Yeah, for sure. I just think yeah, I just think of that. But I mean, obviously, it's Edward Young. What can you really criticize? He's like <laughs> criticizing Edward Young is like a little presumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when Edward made this movie, he uh, recruited a lot of people. He didn't have any experience of making films. So, oh, really? Yeah, like 18%, 70%, 70 You mean the actors? The actors, yeah. They, he used a lot of non-experienced actors at the beginning. There's a, you know, the, the son, Xiao Si, and his father. They are actually real son and father. So... Oh, really? Yeah, they are, they are actually the son and father. It's, there, there's a lot wow. of people, they are just, just, just no experience at all. But you can, they can put, put out this so amazing film. So really, really, and this is made of what year? 1991. 1991. Okay, so which is probably very dang, dang, I mean, the, the movie industry in Taiwan is it's going down in the era. There's no much people going to the theater to watch Taiwanese movies. They're all yeah. watching Hollywood movies. So, so in, in, in such hard situation, in such limited resource, just you can still put out movies. So as only you could, I mean, have the imagination, you do the script right, and you don't need the uh, big star to put out a, 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 a good movie. Yeah. Pretty, pretty I have, good. Pretty. I have one theory that I want to I wanna ask your opinion on. So, like, this movie is one of the greatest, like, Taiwan movies, right? And it is about growing up in the old time, like, 60s. It's about kids. It's about teenagers in high school or whatever. And it's also about gangs. So do you think that this is the reason that so many Taiwanese filmmakers now keep making movies about these subjects? Is it like the influence of this film? Well, they definitely influenced by this film, but for those elements, it's not really have to have. It's just something we all just audience love, so people put, put this in their f- film. But for me, it's not really because of this film, so everybody has to be put up some teenager, some gangster well, in, the, in their movie. So the only reason I say that is because like The Godfather, right, in America, right, The Godfather comes out and it's like the first like gangster movie about like American, like Italian American gangsters. And then after that, a bunch of people made movies about that subject. And so it kind of in my mind, it's like, oh, this movie comes out. It's about gangsters in Taiwan. And so then people are like, oh, we want want to make movies about that. That's cool. Like, I like that. Like, that's an interesting idea. And so then the movies become about that topic. I don't know. Just like, I feel like there's some there's some kind of parallel between like The Godfather and this movie. Yeah, maybe you are right. I don't think think of that before, but maybe there's some 
underneath some subconscious they infect yeah. everybody. Well, I wanted to make some movie like Edward Young, but not necessarily <laughs> the same. But I wanted to steal some idea of him so I can make yeah. good movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video on a brighter summer day. If you have any uh, any movies you want us to review, please let us know in the comments, and we will. We, you know, it's hard for us to get together these days, but we'll try and do a Zoom, a Zoom review like this again. And please like, share, subscribe, and uh, send a couple prayers to Taiwan and send your love. And <laughs> and I uh, will see you guys later. <laughs>